happy about that because it shouldn't have to be. Um, but yeah, even for us, we were like, well, me, I was like, bitch, you're so famous. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm Adam, and this is a podcast about you and your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. And we'll talk about the new album and, of course, Hands Off. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. So uh, first off, talk to me. Were you born and raised in Las Vegas? Is that what I read? Yeah, I was born and raised in Vegas. I feel like I was more raised in L.A. because I moved here when I was 16 after the show. Uh, but my parents are from Philadelphia. They moved to Vegas. My dad was a musician. Um, and so I feel like I am the original showgirl, if you will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you said your dad was a musician or is a musician? Yeah, yeah, he is. He still is, yeah. What does he play? Uh, he's a drummer. Wow, cool. Yeah, uh, so great. Did you grow up watching him play? Yeah, he's really such a big influence in my music. Um, and at the time, you know, it was just so hot to play in Vegas. I mean, it still is. It's had quite the resurgence, but um, he was like rocking it. And my grandfather was a saxophone player. So they were like there gigging. And um, and did they play together? I mean, I'm curious. Was it like a family band situation? They did. My grandpa passed away. Um, God, so many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I have gigs in Vegas, um, I would play with my dad, but I played with my dad a lot when I was younger. Um, and then he went on to take on the saxophone and he introduced me to John Coltrane and Billie Holiday and really like the jazz world, which I feel like I've always had very influenced in my music, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. Very cool. So how old are you when you, I mean, it sounds like you're surrounded by music your whole life. Uh, yeah. Did you start off singing? Do you play drums or saxophone or anything like that? No, I didn't play any instruments. I would like play with my dad's drums or like piano, but like I didn't have proper lessons or, or anything. Um, but I, yeah, I always loved to sing. And um, I, I think like every singer, says like I always wanted you to be a singer but like I really did I always knew you know my whole family played music and so I feel like it was just in my blood it was who I was supposed to be mm -hmm. and were you put in lessons early on for, for vocal lessons or anything like that or was it just you playing with your dad yeah I was I have the best I had the best vocal teacher she was wild so we didn't have a lot of money, so I couldn't take uh, like proper vocal lessons. But we met this lady. Her name was Miss Helen, and she had fire engine red hair. She was from Australia, and she would smoke cigarettes and drink coffee. And she had like these beautiful long nails that would be like mauve or red. And she was just like so fierce. And I was only like six. <laughs> I, you know, I still remember now. Like she's a badass. She was such a badass and she loved me so much. And she was like, I don't care. I'll teach you for free. And so she really was the one that taught me, like, I feel like she was in that I felt so fearless on stage. She really always like wanted me to own that even more than like technicalities with my vocals. Sorry, you Sorry. You, you're, you're, you froze there for a second. I didn't, oh, no. I didn't catch Sorry. what you said. Now Let I me make you. sure I'm not tripping on my phone. Um, wait, let me try to fix it. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. No, I, no, no do not apologize. I just want to, this thing's weird. I mean, the whole internet thing, it, it always has problems, so it's not a big deal. Awesome. Hi, hi, I'm so sorry. No need to apologize. No need to apologize. Um, I just wanted to make sure we got to hear what you said. Um, so you said, uh, we went from, I just said, she sounds like a badass lady. And you said she was a badass, and then it got cut out. <laughs> oh, good. The whole story. Um, yeah, she was. She was the best because more than like vocal technicality or anything, she really wanted me to be like my sassy, fiery, own the stage self. And especially as I get older now, I'm like, I'm so happy that like she didn't want me to be like, she didn't focus on the wrong thing. She really is the reason that I got to be like, like a rock star, you know? Right. She kind of taught you confidence. It sounds like, like there's like owning that stage confidence. Yeah. Yeah, she was. 
Because you could have the greatest voice, and then if you're timid or you know you can't really you know show that you're you're the one up there i can see that being kind of a, a hint like hinder your performance in a way totally i mean listen i think that having incredible vocals you know is important but i've never thought like i'm the best singer but i do feel like i'm a really good entertainer and i think that for me that's just always been more interesting to watch and to be a part of because i think it keeps you know, the performances and the music more authentic and kind of messy and kind of dirty, but very honest and very relatable. And, you know, whatever's happening, it's just kind of happening on stage. And I, I just, I mean, that's one of the reasons I love Janis Joplin. I feel like um, mm -hmm. she was another big influence because whatever was happening. It's just, yeah, like there's a grit while, while she's on stage. Yeah. No, I think that's so true too. And even like, I, I know you're on American Idol. We could talk about that for a minute if it's cool, but like you'll see these people on American Idol, especially in the early stages of it when you watch the show or any of these shows, and you'll have these like powerhouse vocalists that are, you know, can sing anything and they might be insane and hit all these notes. But like it all comes down to just like, can you go up on the stage and do that and like, you know, rock the room? Because if you can't, then you're not going to get the votes, right? I mean, it's like you have to be good at both, if not better at the stage presence, camera work deal than even the vocal. As long as you yeah. can sing. <laughs> you, know I mean? you can't totally, just suck. But I mean, yeah, but that's the thing. Once you get far enough, we can all sing, you know? Like right everyone can sing once you get to that stage. And I think that my season was so early on, uh, season four, and it was still very new. And my season was Carrie Underwood, which I, who I love, right. but we were so opposite. Like she was girl next door and she was like very new and fresh. And I've, one thing about me, like I've always been myself. Like I've mm -hmm. always been the same person and I was very, loud then and very fiery and spit fiery then and a lot of people aren't used to that you know we didn't have like reality stars we didn't have like even amy winehouse or cardi b or the kardashians or like all these people that were like now cool to be reality stars uh it really wasn't like that and so i think that america didn't really know what to do with me half mm -hmm. did and half didn't and so but, you know, I like that. I appreciate No, that. so do I. I think that's awesome. Well, uh, just to rewind hair for a second, how old are you when you got the, the music teacher? And do you still stay in contact with her? I was six when I met her. And then um, we were very much in contact until she passed away. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. A couple years ago. Yeah, that's okay. We, we love her so much. I try to talk about her. So she's always, like, honored. Yeah. So she was there during the American Idol and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, as best as she could be, you know, right. it's a different time. Like you weren't texting people. We didn't have iPhones, you sure. know, but she was aware <laughs> you were in contact enough for she was aware of what was going on. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. But she said she felt like she always knew, like she always knew. And I always knew that we were going to get somewhere. Like we didn't know how, but we knew like that was going to be our life. Yeah, that's incredible. And when you are you doing local talent shows or you obviously you said you were playing with your dad, like, how do you go from like, what were you up to up until auditioning for American Idol? And I, I'd love to hear your story because I've, I've interviewed a lot of, or not a lot, but a good amount of people that have been on American Idol or, you know, done well on American Idol. So I'm curious to hear your story. Everybody has like a different story when it comes to it. Totally. Yeah. My story is kind of crazy. Um, you know, my parents split when I was really young and they were both kind of doing their own thing and I had music. And so I wanted to sing places and being in Vegas, I had the ability to sing in places. I mean, Miss Helen would take me to, um, the hotels and I would sing on the stages of the hotels and, um, I joined pageants so that I could do talent and I didn't even have like enough money to be in the pageant dresses. You know, I just, I wanted to be able to just sing mm -hmm. and I'm really grateful that she had me experience all of that wherever I could. I remember one time I was singing at the Rio and I was like, eight. Hey, like I'm not like a grown at any, in any capacity. Sure. Well, you're and on the show young, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. 
yeah, no, I met Rio Rita, who was like a big deal. And I was like, oh, this is incredible. You know, so, so young, I was like grinding. And I remember going to the American Idol concert and I was like 14 and I was like, this is going to be the thing for me. And it was going to be the thing for me because I wanted to get out of my hometown and I wanted to make enough money and be successful singing to like take care of my family. And it wasn't about like being famous. It was like, I don't want to be poor anymore. And I want to have a good life doing mm -hmm. music. And so I, I was like adamant, like I really knew I was going to make it to the top 12 and I, um, I auditioned right when I was 16 and, um, everybody told me not to. Was and this in I, Vegas? Did you audition in Vegas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes to be able to drive. I didn't know if they had a, an audition there. No, I had like an easy audition, to be honest. I just like went downtown. Oh, cool. um, I auditioned. But wait in line, I'm sure. Did you have to like get there at 3 a.m. And, and hang out until six or whatever when you got to sing? Yeah, I did. I did. It was okay. a couple hours worth of waiting and there's auditions before you meet the judges. So we had to go through those rounds. Mm -hmm. um, and it was tedious you know but I think I was also young enough and not jaded enough to know that like I wasn't gonna make it like I I and, and not because I was the best I just knew that like I was tough so I could do it mm -hmm. and um and I did and I made it to the top 24 and I I was coasting like coasting to the top 24 and then we had a really sad death in my family. My mom's partner uh, passed away before I was supposed to leave for the top 24. And um, that was my, she was my guardian. And oh, wow. so we like had to quickly make the decision. Was I going to keep going or was I going to, you know, stay home because nobody was in a place to really take me. We were mourning. It was very like shocking and unfortunate. I had a baby brother and so we decided to go on, but it was really tough. Like I was not ready to be judged so harshly by America and mm -hmm. also deal with like a mother who was grieving. So there's a lot of personal things happening at the same time as me being judged by America as like this wild 16 year old. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I only say all of that to say like, I, I look at that now with a lot of pride because like it's it, like if I was a mom now to a 16 year old, I'd be like, girl, we're going home. Like, how are we doing? Right. This? You know, which is why I think that I was so adamant about making this album and doing it how I wanted and saying all the things that I wanted to say, because um, I just like wanted to give that back to my little younger teenage self. I love that. Yeah, I, I you just from I was doing quick research on the season you're wrong because i was just curious um and i read i mean not there's a bunch of controversy which came with your season i saw <laughs> like which i thought was bizarre but like where you got eliminated was like this glitch in their voting system so you could have been further on i don't know if you knew this maybe you yeah did. you know we'll never know there's a lot that happened there's yeah. I, I don't like to say <laughs> this part that I'm going to say, because I swear to God, I'm a good loser. Like, I, I don't care. Like I got sent home. I got sent home. I can handle sure. it. But I was absolutely at a breaking point when it came to the top 12, like emotionally, like I didn't have a proper parent taking care of me, helping me. We were singing seven days a week. I was going to school during the day the criticisms that were happening on the message boards, I mean, people would get canceled for, for saying, like they would make mm -hmm. fun of me and how I looked. And, you know, I, my weight, I mean, I ended up having like a really bad eating disorder years later because Awful. of how people would talk about me. And so I went to the producer after my final performance and I was crying and I said, I, I feel like I just can't do it anymore. Like I don't have the capacity like I just and I don't love it like I don't love it like I always loved to sing and I didn't love it and I said I just want to go home so however that looks I just want to go home mm -hmm. and then the next day was the glitch so we had to do the revote and then after the revote 
I got sent home that week. And so, yeah. you know, I don't know. I don't know what it, I don't know what it was, if it would have been, but it definitely happened how it was supposed to. Sure. It was almost like, yeah, meant to happen kind of that way. I'm sure you probably did advance and then the, the system breaks and it was like, okay, well, I I guess it's, time, won- it's time to go home. Yeah, I won the entire show, to be honest. Yeah, with you. for sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you, I mean, to, 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 just to wrap this up, at least Carrie Underwood won your season. Cause then I was like, okay, let me go on to look. And there's, I guess they're on season 21 of this show. And I could literally name maybe two or three people that have, that they have a career after the whole thing ended. So at least like you are one of the, you, your season had one of the very, very few people that went on to like actually become a superstar. superstar. Yeah. Right. Like there's not many, if you really look at in the 21 seasons, how many people really made it out and then put records out and then continued to be a superstar artist. Totally. Totally. So. You know, it's so funny. Cause I interviewed Carrie. Um, I interviewed Carrie just a couple of weeks ago and I was like, hey, girl. And she was like, hey, girl. And I was like, look at us. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we still get to like look at each other because we were roommates also. And that's so cool. She was so cute and gracious still. And I was like, happy about that because and she didn't have to be. Um, but yeah, even for us, we were like, well, me, I was like, bitch, you're so famous. And she was like, <laughs> 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 oh man that yeah it's crazy like that's so cool though so you interviewed her because you you do a lot of stuff aside from singing i know that i've seen like uh like the shorts you're doing on youtube uh like the comedy stuff and then you're on tv and hosting this and hosting that so i know you've got a lot of other you know things going on in your life uh, but obviously singing is probably the the main focus i would imagine this seems like the thing that you wanted to do your entire life yeah. Yeah. The album was a long time in the making. I, I had never planned on being a host. It's not something I wanted to do. Didn't plan on going and acting. It kind of just, when I got done with the show, American Idol had hired me immediately to start hosting American Idol Extra, which was a spinoff of, mm-hmm. of like the late night talk shows. And I mean, I was 17. I was like, yeah, I can do it. I mean, my personality, I wasn't afraid. I was going to say, you have the look and the personality for somebody that could easily do TV. Like, it's not like well, it's, yeah, some challenges and seem like at least for where I'm seeing. Yeah, thanks. I mean, yeah, I was really young and I was like, good. I don't want to go back to high school. I want to be here. So, <laughs> sure. And I was like, good. And I think that that's been the, the, uh, uh, Blessing and a curse. I'm not really afraid to try new things. So with the acting, Fran Drescher had called me and was like, do you want to be my cousin on this show? And I was like, I do. And so I got into that. The only thing that I didn't pursue for quite some time was singing. And I really, I was, I like, I feel like I really, my feelings really got hurt on American Idol. Like I I didn't sing for almost 10 years after American Idol, which is why- There is no album. This is the first album. I singing was like so pure to me and something that I just loved so much. And I feel like I got my vocal cords like ripped out of me after the show, not because of American Idol, but because of everything, like everything that was going on. And because it was so important, like hosting and acting and making people laugh wasn't the important thing to me. I didn't care if you thought I was good at that or not, but mm-hmm. singing is what I cared about. So I, and you yeah. got that behind the curtain look to kind of the, everything that was going on. I'm sure that probably didn't yeah. help a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So were you, but aside from that, were you, you said you didn't sing for 10 years or you, or you didn't really pursue singing at all, or is it just, it was just something you didn't do at all. Um, no, I did not pursue it at all. And then I really didn't sing for like five years. I really was just hosting and acting. And mm-hmm. then I had the opportunity to go on the show called Gone Country, mm-hmm. where it was with John Rich and it was songwriting. And I loved to write. And my agent called me who I loved. And she was like, just go do it. Like, it's good money. Just go do it. Like, mm-hmm. have fun with it. 
And I was like, okay. And so I went to the show and I was like, so nervous. And there was like Jermaine Jackson standing there. And I was like, what is happening? And uh, Sebastian Bach was standing there. And I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to do my thing, I guess. And I started singing and I immediately felt like, like what I felt like when I was a little girl, like I was like, oh, I'm home. Like it just felt like, okay. So I was much guarded and I still didn't pursue it. But then at, then singing gigs started coming to me and I would take them. And, um, and that's kind of how it's, how it's been. You know, mm -hmm. I started, I did get a residency a few years ago in Vegas, which I worked hard for and I wanted, but that's sort of how I got back into singing was just being asked. Wow. Okay. And was that, were you writing for that show or like song? It was songwriting, right? It wasn't even yeah. just going out and performing. Yeah. So you yeah, had already right. been doing songwriting for a while. Was that something you were interested in prior to going on that show? Oh yeah, I thought it was okay. very important to always write my own music and no shade to artists that don't because I feel like some people uh, don't wanna do that. I felt it was really always important for me to sing my own songs, even if it was, you know, collaborating with somebody. Um, I'm like, I'm telling a story. Like I wanna tell my story. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that I write it. Sure. And then what, when do you start, you put a song out like in 2013, is that what I saw? your first like single yeah okay. yeah so i was gigging with a bunch of rock guys and peter frampton and his keyboard player was a good friend of mine and he was like i got a single come to florida let's just put out like a song and I was like, oh, all right, we'll see. But like, I loved rock and roll. So I was like, okay, I'll go. Um, and his name is Rob Arthur. And I got into the studio and literally, like, I, I'm not kidding you. I think we wrote Honey in like 30 minutes. It was done. It was sung. And we were like, this is it. Like, we loved it. And that was um, the first single that came out. And it was very like Aerosmith influenced. I was listening to a lot of Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a great it's a rad song but then from there it took you a while right you didn't put another unless this is just what you have up still on your on your spotify like it, I mean, it looks like 2019 was the next time you put a piece of music out yeah i mean it's a vulnerable thing to put music out oh yeah and, you know as tough and confident as i come off or am in other parts of my life I'm just sensitive with music and with singing. And um, when I put Honey out, I was so proud of Honey, but it also didn't come out during a time, like rock and roll, I feel like is cool again, in a sense, like quote unquote, like it always has been, but like- but Yeah, it died out for, especially in those years. I mean, mid 2000s, it, that was when yeah. it was a lot of the, more like electronic stuff was coming through, especially in like the alt rock world totally and it uh, people were like oh it's dated like it's so dated and i was like no it's not it's amazing like it's so hot and then it wasn't cool for that time so then nobody like liked it really mm -hmm. so i was like so i got mad so i quit putting out music <laughs> yeah i for sure i mean yeah if you don't get the response i could see how that would be difficult um and what gave you the motivation or what gave you kind of the strength to come back and put something back out in 2019? Um, in 2019, I had been with my partner for a few years and I had just started hosting this national gay radio station. We were doing a lot of stories about gay marriage and uh, a lot of stories that don't make mainstream media when it comes to um, the LGBTQ community. And I had written that song, Cry Love, um in like 2014 uh for some for something else that was like not ever to be released i had just written it with this producer and the producer called me up and he said i think you should put it out for pride um and then i had done this deal with jack daniels and jack daniels was like we love it we think you should put it out because we want to make it part of our they were doing this really cool um 
event with it was like a jack and lgbtq and they needed a song and so that's when we released the song and um yeah and that's how cry love came out okay and then the new al- i want to talk to you about the new album so the new album you said it's been a work in progress for a while now when do you when do you start the album i know it's got a lot of deep-rooted like personal meaning to you with you know your grandmother and everything else that, that came along with this so i'd love to hear about it yeah um when my grandma died, my grandma was like my baby grandma. Like I loved Vivian Cavaricci. She was just so cute. And she was so different because she was very Italian and very conservative and very Catholic. And I was like, not. And <laughs> sure. Right. But she like thought I was so great. And I loved that about my grandma. Like I just was so appreciative because even though everything I did made her very nervous and I could see physically on her face, it was making her nervous. Like she was just proud of me. And um, when she passed away in 2020, I, we knew that she was older, but we didn't know she was going to pass kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I feel like, I 2020 was so rough for everybody and I had to go home to visit her uh, while she was dying and I stayed in the bed with her and I was just with her until she passed and uh, I feel like after she died I everything that I had just never dealt with like came out like lava and like you have nowhere to go. It's the pandemic. You're just mm-hmm. stuck with your thoughts, you know, like you can't go visit your friends and mourn your grandma. You can't even have a funeral. You can't see anybody because everyone was really scared April of 2020. So I was just sitting there and I was like, oh, my oh wow. God. So she passed away in April. Yeah. yeah. So this is like heavy lockdown and people were not yes. aware of anything. Of course. Right. And all my friends were like, we love you, but we can't see you because mm-hmm. I also wouldn't leave her like I didn't stay six feet away like I slept in the bed with her and so I was I wouldn't either with my grandfather yeah my granddad passed away I would have done the same thing like yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, okay COVID restrictions yeah exactly please I was like breathing her air I was like nothing you know but people were afraid as I understood sure but it left me very like alone in my thoughts and I got to a place where it just got really dark And I was like, I don't think this is healthy and I don't want this to be, you know, where it ends Mm -hmm. for me. And so I called my producer, who's one of my best friends of 16 years. He was on American Idol as as well. His name is Brandon Rogers. And um, I said, I'm upset. My grandma died. Like, I'm having a hard time. Like, I hate it here. And he was like, all right, well, just why don't you come over to my house and we'll start, you know, like writing about it. And I was like, well, you have asthma. Like, I can't come see you. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's okay. Just come over. And like, it sounds so stupid, but like he had asthma. Right. Again, this time when no one knows. Right. Yeah. And he was afraid of everything, but he was so, he just showed me such a large amount of love. And so I started writing the album. We started officially writing the album in September of 2020. And um, I feel like to make such a long story short, you hear in all the music exactly where I was at through my like mental health and like the healing Mm -hmm. of it all. But I really feel like the gift that my grandma gave me in her dying was truly like a rebirth for me. And so when everything was done, I really wanted to honor her because she just made me have to deal with so many things that I didn't want to deal with. And she made me so brave. And so in the, in the best way, like, like I love people and like, I care so much about people, but I don't care what they think of me. Like if I put this album out and people are like, no, like it's all good. Like it's, it's different. You know, I, Mm -hmm. I just know where I'm at. And it was, I mean, she could not have left me with a better gift. So we named the album Vivian and it's coming out now, September 9th. And I'm just so proud of it. Very cool. And Hands Off is the first single that you've released from from the album. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the song. It's a great, it's a great song. Thank you. Yeah, talk to why did you go with that one first? Um, well, Hands Off was not supposed to be the first song. Good Girl was going to be the first song because it kind of talks about my journey on American Idol. Um, but Hands Off was an important song to write because okay. I was sexually abused when I was 20 and I had never oh my told gosh. Um, well, I mean, I've been in therapy and like everything is good now, but when it happened, you know, this is an experience for a lot of people. They never say anything. And so, like I said, when all these things were coming up, I didn't realize like how much holding it in had really affected me and affected my life and had affected my relationships. And so while I was going through therapy, Brandon and I were just writing like crazy. And so I felt like having that song would honor my experience and maybe help other people. And then when Roe v. Wade was overturned, I was like, no, this has to be the single. This is getting nuts. Like the fact that women can be treated so poorly still here in the United States, you know, I think whether it be sexual abuse, physical abuse, whether it be not being able to make decisions over our own bodies, whether you have sexual abuse happen to you and then you can't get an abortion. Like there's so many reasons why, you know, I had moms calling me pregnant women, particularly for this video. And they said, you know, I'm being harassed at my job, but I'm pregnant and I don't want to leave. So I have to stay because no one will hire a pregnant lady. And it's like, it all just ties in so deeply protecting our non-binary community and women. And so I could not wait to put that out. We made the music video for it. The music video comes out Friday. I was going to say, I didn't see a video yet. (laughs) I was like, did I miss this when you're talking about it? Okay. (laughs) Yeah, the music video comes out uh, tomorrow, Friday, and um, it's just like such a labor of love and all of these women and non-binary people that came together, and um, I'm just so proud of it, you know, and it's really saying, like, keep your hands off of us, figuratively, literally, um, like, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's well. That takes so much courage to to write something like, and then put it out in the world. I mean, like you were saying, to being vulnerable, like in 2013, like to put a song out, and now you're putting out not only you know just the the whole meaning behind the record. I mean that that's a that must have been. I mean that's a lot. I mean that takes a lot of courage. Well, thanks. I feel like. Thank you for saying that. I feel, you know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous. Um, but, you know, I I feel like I just have nothing to lose. Like, I really don't have anything to lose anymore. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that. Like, when my grandma passed away, it was just so clear that, like, everything happens so quickly. Like, we get one go at this life and then, like, it's over. You know, I mean, we may see each other again or whatever, in different right. lives, but like, it's just not my responsibility to worry about what other people think about me. And mm. I just have to know that like, I'm good. I'm a good person. And, and that's what I want people to really feel from this message. Like, like, just do it. Like, just do, like, whatever it is, you know, tell the truth. If it happened to you, or if you want to do something, if you want to write the song, or if you want to try something, or you want to, like, whatever, just do it. Mm-hmm. No, I, 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 and I think, I, I mean, again, that's so vulnerable. And, and like, the fact that you, you put this out, and you're talking about, it, like, I think that's so amazing. And it, people can tell if you're being authentic, too. I mean, that's why I believe like TikTok, certain TikTok videos will do well because it's a place of authenticity. It's not some fake, you know, you know what I mean? Like if you're yeah. telling a story that's meaningful to you, other people can feel that. And especially if they can relate to it. Right. Yeah, totally. And I, and I just think that's such a positive thing. And I think you, something like somebody like you, you know, that's had success and we're, it was are on TV and this, and that, just being like, this is, This happened to me also, like, you know, kind of on that same level. Yeah. I just, yeah. yeah. 
Sorry, <laughs> I thought you were, I was gonna. Yeah, so yeah, no, just, no. I think it's incredible. Um, well, like, is that? I'm sure that's got to be the heaviest song on the album. I mean, you said you have a song about American Idol. Like, is this just kind of your journey from that time to now? Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, it's it's probably the heaviest song. Um, mm. but I try to make them not heavy. Like, I want them to still be like have a groove and have a bop and have it still be like empowering even through like the pain you know what I'm saying which is why mm -hmm. hands off still has a groove to it oh yeah I didn't even realize what the like I have to, now I'm gonna have to go back and listen like like I was just jamming to it like I didn't realize Good. I mean I understood what you're saying but it, I didn't know in in such a direct way you know what I mean yeah yeah but I I didn't want it like that you know with good girl good girl feels like uh I love to sing it. Like, I feel like I get to like do my thing, but it's saying something really important. And what that's saying is, you know, uh, how society took like, or takes like good girls and makes them like bad girls, like as if we did something wrong. And so it's saying like, if you want me to be a bad girl, I'll be a bad girl, bitch. Like, okay, I'll play <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? Cause I did the, I played the roles, but it's empowering in its own way. I have this song uh, about uh, relationships, particularly with um, my parents, which is very vulnerable, but very relatable, where I talk about hating, how you, how you could hate somebody so much because you love them so much. And it's just been so toxic and it's difficult. Like the grip of like really feeling like I, I hate you, but I love you. And I need, just need you to love me back, you know, really mm -hmm. feeling that, um, to the song with my brother, who I told you is my oh, love of my life, baby son. He's like 30 years old. He's going to be 31 next month, but like <laughs> that's my baby. Sure. But he, um, we grew up together. We saw the same things together. And so when he left for the army, a couple months ago, uh, I said, will you do this duet with me for the album before I put it out? Because he's the best singer. And he uh, always wanted to be a singer and he just did never, he was a bug guy who then went into the army. And I just felt like he had so much more potential. Not that bug guys aren't incredible, but I was like, I just feel like he had more potential. Like I wanted him to do something that made him feel good. So he said, okay, his wife and I had to like coerce him. Thank God for her. And so the song is about uh, a, a sibling relationship and how special it is and how like nobody knows you like your siblings, whether you get along or not, or you love each other or not. Nobody knows you from like the day you started in the house, you started in together until the rest of your lives and like what you guys kind of saw and got through. And it's, I, it is like kind of my favorite song on the album. I love that. I love that. And what about the video for Hands Off? You said there's a video coming out tomorrow. Can you tell uh, tell me about the video? Yeah, the video is amazing. I uh, I reached out to a few women, non-binary people, and I was like, if you want to come be in this video, I would love it. And um, the guy that actually shot all of my Melania parodies, I found him straight. <laughs> Those are great. Him. The one you're like, you're like, uh, <laughs> you have like the big sombrero on and you're in Mexico. Oh my God. Like, I know. When the kids were in cages, I was like, I have to make oh, it. I, have I was to, like, dying. So insane. In the jacket um, you had on and everything. Oh, it was funny. Just a mess. Well, and you know what? <laughs> I think that's how people really just know me. It's like a big personality who's funny, which is also why I want you to be like, look, like I'm real here too. Like I got you. But I hired mm -hmm. that kid out of school, straight out of school. And I made him do all this shit with me. And then finally, and like everything, like when I did my own American Idol show for idolatry, I made him do it. And Melania's and all these things and these funny parodies. And so I called him and now he's like doing really well. And That's he awesome. To do, um, he he always wanted to direct a music video, so and he's like well on his way and he's so good. I um, mean, he works with a really incredible company. So I called him and I said, "Will you? You've directed everything else for me. Like, will you direct this?" And he was like, "Absolutely." So it was so nice because we've done everything together, and now this is our next step. He's like my brother. Um, and all of these women showed up and some showed up with their daughters and some showed up pregnant and, um, they're so beautiful and they're so diverse and, and they showed up some of them, they, them, because they're non-binary and 
they still need to be protected and they still have rights. And I, it was just beautiful to see. So you see all of these women in this video being so vulnerable. Um, the shots are just really beautiful. And it, it really is like, we are just like all very collectively, keep your hands off of us. It's shot cinematically and um, it's really good. It's also my first music video, so I'm very excited. That is awesome. Very, very cool. Well, I can't wait to see it. Um, and I think what you're doing is awesome. And I really appreciate your your time today, Michaela. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for um, asking me good questions. Oh, I appreciate that. I do have one more before I let you go, though. Okay. Um, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? I think just don't listen to anybody respectfully. Go with your gut and just do it. Like you want to write the song, write the song. You don't need a record label, you don't need people to believe in you, like all of that will come. I think that you just, you wanna be a singer. I, the biggest thing is to just invest in yourself and that's including time. Like don't let anybody disrespect you and, and really invest in yourself and your writing and where you perform and what you can do. I had this acting teacher tell me a million years ago, the universe doesn't know the difference between a stage with five people in the audience and a stage with 5,000 people in the audience. As long as you give that energy and that's what you put out, all of that will come. So if I'm doing a gig with five people at a karaoke bar, well, not karaoke because that would be too accurate, but like, excuse <laughs> me, everybody. <laughs> but like, if I do a gig for 10 people, it's the same gig for 10,000 people. And I always keep that energy. And so now I gotta start somewhere. Bring me the bad words.